Hello everybody, I'm Scruffy at Scruffy Tales, and this is the War Zone. And as Christmas approaches, unfortunately, battle continues down in Ukraine. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the strategical map to uh, take a look on the locations we will uh, take a closer look at. And here we are, we have Kupiansk in the far north, marked in yellow because uh, the battles are going a bit back and forth. Terny, uh, marked in green because Ukraine has held the line uh, throughout the month. Uh, it's, it has been very static for a couple of weeks. And then we have Bakhmut, Avdivka and Novomikhalivka marked in red because unfortunately down here Russia is on the offensive. And our first stop will be in Kupiansk in the north. And here we have it, single out, so we will uh, more easily locate it on the map. And not much to tell really, uh, the battle lines have been going back and forth uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, Russia is uh, pushing, that has to be said, but Ukraine is launching counterattacks. So the Russians are moving forward two steps and falling back one step. And that's sort of how it's been going for, for the entire month so far, to be honest. And Russia is trying to reach the uh, river system and the uh, accompanying valleys in the green circle. And uh, it will allow them to advance uh, in cover away from the vast open fields. And if they can follow the rivers and the valleys westward, they can reach uh, Petropavlivka and then uh, threaten Kupiansk. So that is what the Russians are after. The Ukrainians are well aware. So Ukraine is putting in a lot of effort in uh, counterattacking and keeping Russia away from this river system marked in the green circle. And now moving on to Terny, south of uh, Kupiansk, north of Bakhmut. And uh, like I said before, it's marked in green because Ukraine has held this line um, the entire month, basically. Russia made a big push, uh, but then it came to a full stop. Uh, because uh, Ukraine uh, launched a counterattack and also held a very vital junction uh, in a small valley that Russia has failed to uh, push through. And here you have it. You can see here that uh, the map has not changed from the 2nd of December compared to the 21st. And uh, Ukraine is holding the line. Russia has not been able, able to move an inch in this area. 
uh, Ukraine launched a counterattack uh, along a valley in the north. Uh, so successfully so, pushing Russia back. And then if you take a look at the map of the 21st, you can see the dotted line where Ukraine uh, has successfully defended um, any Russian attempts to gain access to a valley that would uh, allow Russia to advance through a forest all the way to Terni. So yeah, Ukraine has quite successfully held the line here at Terni, denying the Russians any chance of uh, making headway. Next up, the quite famous battlefield surrounding the city of Bakhmut. And I doubt uh, anyone following uh, Ukraine videos uh, is unaware of where Bakhmut is located, but still, here it is uh, marked on the map. So, moving on. And we will be focusing on three locations uh, around Bakhmut. We have Bodanivka, Kromove, and Klishivka in the south. And uh, let's see here, marker, here we go. And uh, Russia has made some pushes here uh, in this, uh, along the road here with the forested areas. Uh, not much going on up here. This has been fairly static. I think the uh, contested area has expanded a bit, but the Russian controlled area remains the same. They have, like I said, made some gains down here. And what they are after is gaining access to this small valley and stream here uh, so they can advance on the town without having to cross uh, the great uh, fields. And they're also trying to push along here because if they can gain access up here, uh, they can actually fire downhill. This is a slope, the farmland here. So they can fire from the tree lines here straight into town and also follow uh, the trees, follow the road here into town as well. So they're trying to advance along this route and trying to gain access here. And here we have a 3D image from a different angle. The Russian attempts to advance north of Budanivka. Uh, Russia has access control of the area up to this windbreak here to the lake. So trying to push through this windbreak here or this forest here, uh, probably a lot of fighting going on as Russia is trying to gain access to the town this way. Uh, here we have a river and downward slope. This is a hill, high ground, downward slope into the river. And then we go uphill to this tree line here. Now this windbreak here is very exposed. Uh, it's in the contested area as you can see. I'm not sure how Ukraine is able to hold on to it and probably because it's difficult for Russia to attack downhill across the, uh, the marshes and then go uphill. Uh, but if Russia manage, uh, manages to get across maybe attack from here uh, there won't be much Ukraine can do to hold it since they will have difficulty moving reinforcements across the open terrain downhill here. So 
if Russia commits to taking this windbreak, uh, I think Ukraine will have trouble holding on to it. And if Russia manages to do that and gain access to this windbreak, maybe push in here, um, then they could uh, make a concentrated effort into pushing uphill the last couple of yards and meters to gain access to the road and a windbreak here in order to uh, push on uh, push on into the wooded area here and also follow the windbreak here because as you can see this is high ground uh, with overwatch positions of the town itself so if they can get, get up here then they can support an assault from this position as well so yeah Ukraine is uh, holding the three, three lane here wind breaks and probably uh, having stiff resistance in this forest here to not allow Russia to bypass the lake and uh, yeah here you can see here's the Russian attempt to get past the lake uh, probably a lot of fighting going on in this small forest here Russia could try and gain access to this windbreak, like I said, that's the one here, and gain access to the windbreaks here, and also push into the forest here. That would allow them to utilize this windbreak and also this windbreak to outflank Ukrainians, gain access to this windbreak here, and the high ground that allows them to fire down into the town supporting any push from the lake and uh, moving on we are now we, we were talking about this area up here and uh, this is where the lake was now we're gonna be focusing on this bit here south of Bodanivka or southeast rather and uh, as you can see, Russians are the Russians are trying to grab this forest here and the road along it, uh, going through it rather, and they do that because they want to gain access to this stream and this valley, and that will allow them to push into town in in uh, relying on cover, and they manage to gain control of this field, and more than likely by pushing along this road or stream i think it's a road um so they're pushing along here probably some terrain uh, features here that we can't see on this map and uh, that allows them to advance here in some form of cover and gain uh, control of this area here so they're pushing here towards the uh, valley gonna be pushing along the forest here to the valley here and the stream and uh, more than likely they will be trying to push along the windbreak here so that all these three forces link up in the valley putting pressure on the Ukrainians from uh, various uh, angles forcing Ukraine to fall back into town then the Russians have access to the uh, valley and they can begin advancing into the valley probably uh, coordinating these efforts with an assault from the lake as you can see they're gonna probably be attacking here for, through the valley and at the same time from the lake and then they gain access to the town itself uh, if they get this far they are probably gonna try and push even further along uh, the road because if they gain access to this forested area they can shoot down at the town because this is a downward slope so they can set up shop in the tree lane tree line sorry for that and fire into town and even follow the uh, windbreak here along the road potentially into town as well as following the forest here into the town so the russians um, the russian attempts at pushing forward here is very important for the russians and ukraine needs to hold this piece of terrain and this valley if they want to keep the Russians out of Budanivka so we'll see what happens but currently Russia is having a lot of successes on this big hill here and they have been steadily pushing the Ukrainians um, backwards so we'll see what happens if uh, this is where the Russians finally
<laughs> it's uh, shut down as usual. Uh, if this is where the Russians finally meet their match uh, in this ongoing fight here uh, outside of Bodanivka. And now we're moving on to uh, Kromove, moving away from Bodanivka. Uh, Bodanivka, now we're moving down here to Kromove, uh, where we have the uh, racetrack. And uh, down here we have Ivanivsky. And uh, the Russians have steadily moved up here. Last time I made a video about uh, the uh, situation in and around Bakhmut. They were at this road, if I'm not mistaken. They have now pushed past the road and are at the uh, racetrack or the um, dirt track, rather. And they have also pushed into this small farm or field up here, closing in on the village here that I mentioned. They need this village and they need this forest here. So you can see uh, the contested areas slowly pushing westward towards the village and the forest. And why is this important? Well, like I said in my previous video dealing with the, the situation at Bakhmut, if the Russians manage to push along the edge of the ridge here or into the uh, uh, valley here uh, and gain access to the village and gain access to this forest, they can push towards Bodanivka along the windbreaks, outflanking Ukrainians along this road. Remember this stretch here that was high ground where they could fire down at Bodanivka. So if they outflank the Ukrainians here, and grab these windbreaks, they can force Ukraine back, set up shop here. But it won't be without issue grabbing the village and the forest. I mean, take a look at this. Um, here you have the racetrack, the dirt track. And here we have the uh, village and the forest. And the Russians are pushing along the edge of the ridge here towards the village. But this is actually Google map uh, footage, uh, street view footage from the actual location. And if you use Google Maps, you can find this location and look around in full 360 degrees. So this forest here, it's the one over here. And here we have the track, right? So if the Russians want to push all the way over here, take a look at the terrain that they have to cross, and especially the terrain here. This is not favorable terrain for an assault. So the Ukrainians, if they're set up here in the forest, they can fire all across here quite easily. And uh, so this will be a very difficult approach for the Russians. And if they manage to reach the village and get into it, they will take severe losses in doing so. So uh, hopefully Ukraine will be able to hold the village and the forest uh, and utilizing the favorable terrain uh, as much as possible. Right, so with that out of the way, we're now moving on to Klyshivka. Uh, located down here, as you can see. And the Russians have been making a steady push along this forest here, uh, along the very top of a hill, the, uh, along the ridge line of a hill here, following the forest and then grabbing the bend in the road here, uh, which might appear a bit strange. Why are they uh, stretching? It looks like they're overreaching almost. And I'll explain what the Russians are up to in this location and why it's important. And here you have how they have pushed forward. And this force here, we have it here, the bend in the road, right? Take a look what this area here. What is this? This is trench lines. Trench lines that used to be in Ukrainian control. This section here is now contested. 
So the Russians have pushed along this forest, pushed up here, and now there's fighting going on in the trenches here. And um, yeah, uh, here you can see how the Russians have pushed forward. This area here is here. So these trench lines here are more than likely in Russian control uh, because it, I don't think the Ukrainians are able to hold on to this section of tr trench line at this point. So this is probably Russian control. The Russians are here at the Bend End Road controlling the uh, entrance to the trench system. And this is where Ukraine is still in control, getting resupplied and reinforcements from the forest and the valley. And uh, so this is the clash right here in these trenches here. Uh, deadly, deadly and uh, savage and brutal fighting going on more than likely in the trenches here. Uh, Russia has a couple of options, though. Uh, as you can see, we have trenches here. Uh, that they can uh, push in. Oh. This goddamn headset. Anyway, they're trying to push in here, as you can see here. Gain control of this area here. So they're pushing in along the trenches here. And if they get all the way up here, uh, they could potentially link up with friendlies in this windbreak and then they can continue here. Uh, this is listed as contested. I'm not sure if the Russians have gotten this far yet. Maybe they have. But if they push up along this trench line and along the windbreak and link up here, they can then uh, join forces into breaching the trench line here and moving down this way. Uh, the trench line here is also listed as contested, but I think this is still in Ukrainian control. I think what's going on is there's a lot of gunfire uh, going on across the field. Uh, so um, that is why this might be uh, listed as contested. And uh, so I think if there's any real fighting going on, it's up here between Ukrainians and Russians and obviously here. Uh, so the Ukrainians are in control still of the trench lines, firing down uh, or across the field rather at the Russians hiding in the uh, tree among the trees and in the uh, trenches down here. And if we're zooming in a bit, uh, we can see the. Uh, trenches here. This is where the uh, main fighting is going to be taking place. And uh, the Russians are going to, like the Russians probably have gotten this far. I think this bend here uh, is where uh, the clash is, uh, potentially around here somewhere, because this is where Ukraine can uh, ho hold a stiff defense. If they have a machine gun or a couple of guys with AKs firing up here. It's going to be difficult for the Russians to come around. They need to somehow get uh, grenades uh, or mortars uh, on this location here before they can start advancing. And so this is probably a natural position for the Ukrainians to actually hold the Russians at bay. Uh, unless the Russians have pushed past this point. <laughs> Uh, then, then I would suspect this is the uh, next best location for for the uh, Ukrainians to hold them, uh, hold the Russians off. These trenches here, not very well built, easy to uh, push along with the uh, troops, and uh, you you really need these sharp corners to uh, effectively defend trenches. So in these. Uh, trenches here, the Russians will have an easier time advancing. Uh, so maybe that's what we're seeing here with this big contested area that the Russians have gained access here and are moving along here. Uh, this section here, 
will probably be the most difficult for Russians to advance along because as, as, when they reach this bend, if you have a machine gun up here, uh, there's just no way the Russians can uh, threaten it or reach it with hand grenades. So then they need indirect fire mortar support to deal with the Ukrainians up here. So I think the Russians may have pushed up all the way here. And here is uh, where the Ukrainians have locked them down, uh, locked this trench down with machine guns and what have you. And uh, because the Russians can't realistically throw hand grenades all the way over here to suppress the Ukrainians in order to make a charge along this uh, trench here. And, uh, and if they are here, then maybe yeah then maybe yeah this they may actually have gotten this far if they've pushed all the way up here it's not uh, unthinkable to assume they have also reached this position so the ukrainians are holding here and denying the russians to jump over the, into the trench here and with the some well-placed uh, troops up here they should be able to lock down this approach here as well so i think that is probably what's going on here uh, without really knowing. I'm just talking out of my ass like I always do and uh, wildly guessing. So why is this trench here so important? Why are the Russians hell-bent on pushing in here and grabbing this uh, fortified area? Well, uh, as you can see from this location and from this location, you are on high ground overlooking Klishivka. So when the Russians are trying to enter this town of Klishivka, they can fire down on Ukrainian positions quite easily, uh, positioning uh, vehicles here in the forest. They can fire any building they want. And if they set up the guys with binoculars here, they can easily spot Ukrainian strongholds in Klishivka and can guide in mortars and artillery and drone strikes. And uh, the force here is located in a valley. So if they control the trenches here, the Russians, then they can effectively deny the Ukrainians the ability to push out of the valley up onto the hill. So the Russians have realized that if they grab the trenches here and hold the high ground, they can open fire onto Ukrainians in Klishivka and they can also deny the Ukrainians the ability to move in reinforcements through this valley here. And that's it. Uh, that's all we have for uh, Bakhmut. And now we're going to move, move on to Avdivka. And highlighting Avdivka on the map, I think most of you know where it is, but just in case, here it is. And here we have Russia's various uh, approaches to assaulting the city of Avdivka and also Russian attempts to cutting uh, supply lines to Avdivka. And uh, here we go with the marker. Uh, they have made a strong push here into an industrial zone uh, down by a quarry, grabbing one uh, industrial building factory complex after the other. As you can see, they made a strong push here and they have started to entering the extreme outskirts of the city itself. And in so doing, they are now in a good position to flush out the Ukrainians from the forest here and uh, gaining access to uh, some suburbs up here. 
So that is probably what we will see in the next coming days. There's also a large... Uh, goddamn headset a large uh, valley here uh, that will funnel the russians along this uh, road here and the quarry so they can't uh, easily outmaneuver ukrainians this way uh, so their their assault will be coming like they're doing straight along the uh, road and street here and then they will probably fan out north into the forest here uh, they're also pushing down a valley here uh, and my guess is they're trying to reach a big hill right next to the lake and from this hill they can uh, uh, gain control of a suburb here and if they gain access to the suburb they are in a good position to launching attacks into the city and uh, then of course we have all the yellow dotted lines the supply routes uh, the russians are trying to bypass the uh, coke plant this way uh, gain access to the forest and some suburbs and cutting the supply lines uh, over here and also in so doing uh, isolate the factory uh, they are also trying to push in from the south to uh, Tonenke and Siverne to cutting this supply line this supply line is basically useless i don't think the ukrainians are relying on it too much it's dangerously close to russian positions and they have these two much more secure supply routes into the city uh, so even if the russians reach severn and Tonenke, uh, the ukrainians still have uh, good supply routes to depend upon uh, but uh, because of that the russians are obviously trying to reach uh, these supply lines and they're doing that by attacking Stepova and if they grab Stepova they can swing in and come down this way and cut this supply line leading to the factory the coke plant and if they get this far well then they are obviously not that far off from reaching the main supply line and uh, if they grab Stepova they can also push on towards Berdici and then they cut the supply line from the north and here they are in a good position from moving on to Semenivka and cutting even more supply lines and uh, they're also trying to outflank the uh, Ukrainian positions in Stepov and Berdichi by going up here north like I've said in pr multiple previous videos uh, trying to reach this small village here and to cut the supply line coming in here from the north so as you can see, uh, it looks like a very well constructed plan here that the Russians have conduct, uh, conducted, uh, concocted. I can't talk, it's in the middle of the night and I'm tired. So trying to reach the vital supply lines from multiple angles, as well as assaulting the city itself from uh, different uh, positions. So yeah, um, the Ukrainians have held on. Uh, so far and done an incredible job in holding the line uh, but crucially they must hold Stepova because if the Russians gain access to, to Stepova they can push aggressively south and begin cutting supply lines and they can threaten Berdici and uh, cut the uh, supply lines coming in from the outside as you can see there's only really three supply routes leading into the battlefield and uh, they all link up here in Orlivka and from Orlivka you have three supply lines leading into the city itself so if the Russians can get in here and threaten Orlivka uh, Ukraine is in trouble <clears throat> and Stepova is uh, crucial like I said if they grab Stepova, then they get options in how to uh, threaten the city itself. And the Russians are doing it by trying to gain access to this windbreak and uh, f outflank this uh, Ukrainians from the south. There's also a small stream here, as you can see, uh, that the Russians have used to gain access to this windbreak. 
and they are pushing along the stream to gain access to this windbreak. And if they manage to grab the windbreak here, it's now contested, then they can continue down the stream into these windbreaks, and then they are basically at Bergici. Uh, the Russians have also steadily uh, pushed northwest here, and uh, from here they can gain access to the windbreaks here and cut the supply line over here, and they can also follow the windbreaks south and outflank Berdichi. So this is what the Russians are doing. Uh, they are not just committing to a full-on frontal assault that will see hundreds of uh, soldiers die uh, without any gains. They are trying to apply pressure on a broad front, forcing Ukraine to make decisions, forcing Ukraine to allocate troops, and they have made gains here in Stepove, they have made gains north of Stepove, and they are definitely making gains up here, <clears throat> slowly pushing and outflanking the Ukrainian positions. And, uh, oh God, I can feel really feel I'm tired. It's really in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, last time I was talking about Stepova, the Russians were uh, holding these buildings here. They'd pushed down the windbreak here. And I theorized that the Russians had pushed in here and down here and then potentially fighting over this complex here. And now we can see that according to the deep state map, uh, yes, indeed, the Russians did push along the uh, buildings here, grab this building here, and they also managed, like I uh, speculated, to cross the street, gain access here, and push on into this compound eventually. So that is where we have the Russians and the uh, contested territory has expanded the ukrainians have been pushed back uh, this area is contested i don't understand how has the russians somehow managed to cross all this open space and push the ukrainians out i i don't think so i think this is still in ukrainian hands it's just that it's probably under a lot of fire and the ukrainians aren't capable of moving freely but i don't think there are any Russians in this area at all. So it's uh, more than likely still in Ukrainian control. It's just that it's taken a lot of fire, uh, making it difficult for the Ukraine, Ukrainians to uh, find good positions in these uh, buildings and rubble here. Uh, other than that, this area here is contested, but we've seen a lot of videos of the Russian positions here being heavily engaged by Ukrainian Bradleys and um, T-72 uh, main battle tanks. So, yeah, I don't think the Russians are capable of pushing on too far into the contested area. I think it's more likely that it's contested because the Ukrainians have backed away to avoid getting hit by mortars and stuff and then they bring up the uh, vehicles to open fire down the street at various uh, Russian locations and I wanted to highlight a bit why uh, the Russians haven't um, more than likely have not been able to push on and uh, this is the extent of their uh, uh, controlled area and uh, you have a couple of buildings here and some buildings here but here it seems like you have mostly gardens and here wide open spaces here we have the street this headset jesus christ anyway so yeah street and here you have gardens wide open area wide open areas the russians can't realistically cross here safely. Uh, I guess they can try and make a dash across, but I doubt they will. And uh, maybe they will try and reach the gardens here, but if the Ukrainians are set up shop here, then, you know, 
entering here is a death sentence. They'll just open fire with AKs and machine guns and the Russians will drop dead. So the reason why the Russians are having trouble leaving this area, they may be able to grab here and here, is, but beyond that, wide open spaces that definitely, definitely does not favor the uh, Russians. So that is why the Ukrainians can have Bradley's further down the street firing up here and the uh, and probably down here and firing this way as well. Uh, the Russians are trapped. They can't move on. They need to find a way to deal with Ukrainian vehicles before they can leave this area and gain access to this building, these buildings and potentially even cross here. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, just to highlight, uh, we have seen multiple videos of the Ukrainians either advancing along this street uh, all the way up to Russian positions and firing point blank into the buildings here, what's left of them. Or they have Bradley's station down here and uh, quite sensibly so firing along the street at Russian positions. Now this is all rubble and it's winter so the trees don't have uh, the trees are quite barren so it's easy to find angles to uh, uh, have good lines of sight on uh, Russian positions up here even if you're down here. So what we see the Bradley's doing is moving back and forth on the street here firing at the Russian positions up here making it damn difficult for the Russians to advance in this area. So we have all the open spaces, making it difficult for the Russians to leave this section of the village. And on top of that, you have Bradleys and tanks locking down the street, making it difficult to cross the street, making it difficult to advance with vehicles. And uh, the fact that we're seeing Bradleys firing down the street tells me that Russia is having uh, really a real difficult time bringing in bringing in vehicles of their own to contest the street the russians they want to do this as well they want to have set up shop here somewhere with a bmp or a tank firing down the street at the ukrainians but we're not seeing that we're seeing ukrainians uh, in control of the street even if they can't push the russians out they are making damn sure that the russians aren't pushing beyond the open territory here. So that is why Stepove is uh, so crucial and they need to hold because if Stepove falls, then Russia can push down the windbreaks here and they can begin to threaten Berdichi. And if they grab Berdichi, then they can push down to Semenivka and you know, then they are right outside of Orlivka. So yeah, if step over falls and uh, then things will look begin to look really grim for Avdivka as long as Ukraine holds the over then they can hold the quarry then they can hold the hill and then they could potentially hold the suburbs here and moving on to last but not least Novo Mikhailivka and located uh, south of Avdivka, not far from Volodar, and uh, close to Marinka that people have been reporting on uh, uh, of late. But uh, I was early, uh, quite early on uh, pointing out that Novo Mikhailivka uh, would be a hotspot, and here we are. It well and truly is a hotspot. And uh, Marinka that everyone was talking about uh, and uh, at the beginning of the month and here we have Novo Mikhailivka and you can see now <clears throat> on the 21st on the 22nd as you can see Russians have pushed up along the valley here along the river 
all the way up here and they also put green, gain ground across the farm fields here like so and also grabbed a lot of territory uh, east of Popieda. And here we can see uh, how the Russians have uh, for about a week been pushing really hard on the 14th uh, they were down here this was contested area they were contesting uh, the farms and the uh, industrial locations outside of Novo Mikhailivka uh, they then made a dash as you can see here and this tells me they probably went ahead and assaulted with vehicles armored vehicles along the road and drove at speed across the open field and managed to get, get troops into these locations here that is why this be, all of a sudden became uh, Russian controlled otherwise I don't see how they could gain control of the fields like that uh, from one day to the other and uh, then on the 18th uh, a couple of days later after some hard fighting they had gained control of these farms and were in a very good position to launching an assault into the town itself all they needed really was to bring in more reinforcements along the road and uh, reinforce what they had and then they could push into town uh, this was the 18th here we have the 18th then the ukrainians decided that this was not kosher so they launched a counterattack, as you can see on the farm here on the 20th it was now uh, contested more than likely in ukrainian hands and uh, on the 21st the russians responded by pushing strongly into the uh, uh, valley here along the river as you can see they pushed up this way and Ukraine continued to pushing the Russians out of this farm here the middle one as you can see it's also contested so this is probably this farm here is probably in Ukrainian control and this is where we have the contested area and the Russians are in control of this farm here so as you can see it's been a lot of back and forth here the Russians made a strong push along the road across the field grabbed these three farms were more than likely with a blitzkrieg and uh, the ukrainians then launched counter assaults into these farms and secured this one and they currently are fighting to gain control of this one uh, oh yes we also saw that here on the 18th this is where the russian control is and then by the 20th they pushed up to these to this intersection and are right at the outskirts of town uh, to the east and if we take a look you can see here this is the road that the Russians uh... <sighs> this headset is killing me this is the road that they launched their uh, blitzkrieg along and uh, attacked the three farms or uh, industrial locations and as you can see it's wide open spaces wide open spaces so now that russia is only left with this one it's difficult to bring in reinforcements so they are forced to advance along this valley here with the river basically in order to try and outflank the ukrainians because the ukrainians now have the upper hand they have the town they can move in reinforcements into these farms or industrial locations and put pressure on the russians and they can do it quite safely there's going to be artillery all over the place obviously but the russians would they have what this highway here or this country road and this small dirt road to rely upon uh, so the russians holding this farm are in a very very exposed position indeed <clears throat> and if you take a look at this um, this is the farm that the uh, russians are in control of and this is the contested 
location and I believe the Ukrainians are in full control of this farm here. Uh, they're probably in control of this location as well. Take a look at this. They can just move in as many troops as they need until they have control of all these buildings. Uh, but what can the Russians do? Well, they can move along the river and the valley, like I said, and outflank this position coming in from here. But this area here is contested, and I don't think they have managed to reach as far as being able to threaten this location or support it. And uh, launching attacks from this farm here over the field, probably not going to happen. They can only move realistically along the road here and the windbreaks. Uh, I doubt they are running across this open field here. That would be utter suicide. So the Russians in the farm here can only attack into town this way. And this is no man's land. You have Ukrainians holding this location. The Russians are holding here. This is where the fighting is going on. This is where they are clashing. Here we have no man's land, probably shooting across the field, but no one is dumb enough to rush across. So how can the Russians resupply this location? Well, probably not uh, by the main road, since that goes straight past this location here. So the Ukrainians have it locked down. What the Russians can do is move in troops along this dirt road here. And I think this is their only supply route leading to this farm or whatever it is. Uh, maybe it's a small village outside of the village. I don't know. Nah, I don't see any buildings really, to be honest. Whatever this is, uh, the Russians can only realistically bring in supplies and reinforcements along this dirt road. And from here, all they can really do is attack along this road into town here. And taking a look at this location, uh, this is where the three farms are at. And now we're moving over here to that intersection that the Russians managed to grab. F wide open spaces, flat, flat farmland. So they must have made a strong push down this road, despite this being wide open spaces. And what I suspect they managed to do is grab this brown patch here, as you can see, trench lines. So this was a fortified Ukrainian position. You have trenches here as well. And the Russians probably made a dash uh, with armor and reached it and overran it and grabbed it. So now they are in control of these trenches here. Uh, and uh, but I mean they can't really move anywhere from here to be honest I mean take a look at this this is the intersection here you have the patch where the trenches are so they came down this road at speed grabbed this location but now what if you have build Ukrainians in every building here uh, potentially vehicles moving up and down the streets how will Russia be able to cross here without losing a ton of vehicles just like they did at Volodar? So I think they got this far, but it's going to take a while before they can exploit this situation in, uh, in full, to be honest. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, intersection up here I don't think the Russians can utilize it that much unless they can support a push through this stream here they could push along the stream and reach the, the town uh, over here maybe then they can utilize this location as fire support as they're trying to do that uh, if oh I doubt Russia can hold on to this location for that much longer it's very exposed and the Ukrainians have made strong pushes to reclaim these uh, industrial sites or farms or whatever they are. So I doubt Russia will be able to hold on for long here unless they keep pushing like they have been doing. They countered by pushing up the valley here after they lost these two locations. So if they keep going up here, 
that could uh, put pressure on the Ukrainians and uh, which would relieve this location. But my bet is that Russia will lose this location in the coming days. So that will probably be Santa's Christmas gift to Ukraine that they managed to reclaim this farmland here or this farm. And in so doing, Russia will lose control of uh, these fields here as well, obviously. Well, that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, I am super tired uh, drinking coffee like a madman and it's time.